Hey, thanks for connecting into my Evagen Electronics channel. In here, uh, I plan on detailing the tips that you need to understand when dealing with electronics, especially for robotics. And today, I would like to talk about DC motor control. What we have here is the setup that I have uh, removed from my R2D2. Uh, it's basically the, the foot motor, and as you can see, this is the motor that that propulses the R2D2 unit, and it, it is using a DC motor like this. This is a scooter, uh, a kit scooter motor. It can do up to uh, basically around 100 watts. It's basically four or five amps, but it's a very powerful, very powerful motor. I am gonna go ahead and get it started, and then we're gonna talk about how we control uh, different aspects of this motor. All right, first thing I'd like to teach you about DC motors and the controllers is how to control the speed of the motor. And what you will find is that the speed of the motor is directly proportional to the voltage we are applying. So right now I'm applying somewhere, somewhere around 24 volts. We can see it on the scope, this yellow line is on the 24 volts. You can see it on the power supply, we have around 24 volts. If I change that voltage, you'll see that the motor speed is going to change as well. And the way it changes is, if I decrease the voltage, the speed decreases. If I increase the voltage, the speed increases. So that is perfectly easy. Let's see. I am going to decrease the voltage. And you can hear and see the motor slowing down. That's the speed the motor moves with close to 9 volts. That speed should always be close to the same, except that when you load it, it may be uh, different depending on how much current it can go through. We'll go to current later. If I increase the voltage, you're going to see the speed go up again. Notice that I'm running the motor at 30 volts at this moment. It is going considerably faster than it was going at 24. Although the motor is rated at 24 volts, you can still operate it at higher voltages. It is not recommended to use the motor at all times with a voltage higher than its rated voltage, but it can be done. Now, there are different ways of controlling this DC voltage. You can have uh, literally a mechanical contraction that basically does the same thing I was doing with my hand, which is basically adjusting a pot, and you can have some kind of a voltage a regulator that changes uh, with the resistance of this pot and using a ser an RC servo motor uh, uh, connected to this uh, potentiometer you could control the voltage I've seen RC cars doing that I don't recommend that for robotics but if you want to try it be my guess I mean it's something that can be done the second alternative is to use a linear amplifier a linear amplifier allows you to change the DC voltage linearly. So basically this uh, linear amplifier has an output that is an analog voltage proportional to some uh, very small signal input. Let's say a voltage from 0 to 5 volts becomes a signal from 0 to 30 volts with high current capacity. So now you can use your DAC of uh, a DAC output on your microcontroller to drive this linear amplifier and you are going to get uh, the power stage that you need to control the speed of the motor None of those two alternatives is the one that I like to use the most actually what I like to use is an H bridge and an H bridge with PWM that stands for pulse width modulation and I promise that I'm going to generate another tutorial Detailing uh, what pulse width modulation is but right now. I'm just going to show it The important thing that I want to detail is that you can control 
the energy being supplied to the motor by turning the motor on and off a percentage of the time. If you do this very fast, it really doesn't look like the motor is being turned on and off. It actually just looks like you're applying a lesser voltage. I'm still applying 24 volts, as you can see, on the yellow line. However, I'm applying a square wave, and I can change that square wave. When I change the square wave, what I'm changing is the relationship between how, how long is the motor on and how long the motor is off. The longer the motor is turned on, the more energy I'm supplying to it. The longer the motor is turned off, the less energy I'm supplying to it. As a, and as a result, the wider the on time is, the faster the motor moves. As you can see, the speed of the motor is directly proportional to the time on. That is how, how wide the pulse, the high side pulse is. That is called time on. And that, this contraction of PWM allows us to control the speed of the motor.